whole of human history is full of secrets and mysteries. In fact, even now in the age of science and technology, our whole world order is causing thousands of questions, many of which cannot be fully answered by scientists. The Time Puzzle crew tries to uncover some of those mysteries surrounding the mysterious places of Kazakhstan. From ancient times, people looked to the sky. They considered the sun and stars to be gods who worshipped them and were afraid of their anger. For a long time, it was believed that the earth is flat and stands on the backs of three elephants, which is held on the shell of a sea turtle floating on the boundless ocean. Gradually, the secrets of the universe began to open to people. The researchers realized that the earth is round and there are many other planets and galaxies. Astronomy became a science, people started to study space. Kazakhstan played an important role in this. Watch in today's episode. One of such the biggest discoveries that were made, it was discovered in 1960s in our observatory. Why did Soviet Almaty become one of the most suitable places for building an observatory? Astronomers from all over the Soviet Union came here to observe the sky. Not every observatory had such instruments. What discoveries and hypotheses made by Kazakh astronomers in the first half of the last century are now being studied and developed by NASA specialists? Our Moscow colleagues conducted an experiment in 1970. The first in the world. The first in the world. The laser location of the moon. All this and more watch right now. Space has always excited people's minds. At first it was studied simply looking at the stars, later the first telescopes appeared. And now rockets with astronauts on board are sent into space. But there is still a huge amount of questions. What is there in the infinite universe? My name is Andrei Slozhin and today with the Time Puzzle we are going to learn who and how studies space in our country, what discoveries were made by Kazakhstani astronomers and whether there is life on other planets. The first to study space were the Egyptians. For 2,000 years before our era, they knew that the day lasts for 24 hours and there are 365 days in the year. The ancient Greeks were aware of the five planets of our solar system and they gave the names to most constellations. In the 4th century BC, Aristotle suggested that the Earth is round and another ancient Greek scientist, Eratosthenes, tried to calculate its circumference. On the territory of ancient Kazakhstan, people also looked at the night sky. The tribes that lived here were guided by the stars, the sun and the moon. They gave them their names. A great bear was called Jati Karakshi, seven robbers, Polaris, Timikazik, Iron Stake. And Jupiter, Yesakugan. After hundreds of years, Kazakhstan will become a space state. The starting point for this event can be considered October 1941. It was then that the Astrophysical Observatory and the Astrophysical Institute were founded. The president of the National Center for Space Research and Technology, Chingiz Omarov, told the crew of Time Puzzle how it happened. In 1941, when the best scientists of Moscow and Leningrad at that time came to Almaty to observe a total solar eclipse, after that, scientists, still knowing that there is a wonderful astral climate here, the city is next to it, Almaty is beautiful, they decided to establish an institute here. By the way, it is one of the oldest institutions in our country, which was the basis for many other institutions as well. At the time when the Academy of Sciences was formed, our institute was one of the very first, the first basic institutions in Kazakhstan. The first director of the institute was Vasily Grigorovich Fesenkov, a well-known Pulkovo astrophysicist, a member of the Academy of Sciences of the USSR Gavriil Tikov, came together with him on the Russian delegation. 
He brought two astronomical instruments, a telescope with a large photographic camera and a quadronograph. This apparatus made it possible to obtain images of the solar corona. A total solar eclipse is very rare. And as a rule, they are observed in a very limited place on Earth. Sometimes you have to travel, so our employees went even to Mexico, to Brazil, in order to observe a total solar eclipse. At that time, a total solar eclipse was the only way to study the outer layers of the Sun, the so-called solar corona, which is visible only when the Moon completely closes the disk of the Sun. And this lasts only a few minutes, two to three minutes, a maximum of six minutes. And so, for the sake of this, astronomers go to the most distant corners of the Earth in order to observe such an eclipse. It is very important that one can see at the same time those outer layers of the Sun that have a very serious influence on our Earth. Seven expeditions were sent to Kazakhstan to monitor this solar eclipse. Academician Fesenkov looked for a place for the future observatory not far from the city center. Kamenskoya Plateau was suited ideally for this purpose. At that time, it was the outskirts of the city. It was easy to get to. But these days, the academician held this place on a note there was no a single word about building an observatory. It is important to note that the war already started. It was September of 1941, the 21st of September. In fact, Leningrad was in blockade. And it would seem that who cares about some solar eclipse? Nevertheless, the government has allocated the necessary funds, well, of course, somewhat smaller than expected. But nevertheless, scientists from different observatories of the Soviet Union were able to come to Almaty. It was then, at the suggestion of Vasily Fesenkov, that the collective of the first scientific research institute of astronomy and physics was formed in Kazakhstan. The scientists worked in the vicinity of Talga in the Butakov Gorge, but the most convenient place was still the Kamenska platform. The first talks about the construction of an observatory here began during the war, but they began to act only in 1947. The building was built by Japanese prisoners of war. Telescopes were installed in the domes. They were brought to the observatory by horse-drawn transport and the scientists climbed the hill on foot. At that time, they were the most modern surveillance devices. They increased hundreds of times, had mechanical drives and counterweights. These units were completely different from their ancestors. The first telescope was invented in the 17th century. It was made by Galileo Galilei. That telescope increased the image only threefold. Later the device appeared, which was ten times more powerful. People could see the mountains on the moon and the four moons of Jupiter. One interesting Kazakh legend is associated with Jupiter. Nomads determined the time of Pesha by the planet Venus, or as they called it, Tan Sholpan, the morning star. Our ancestors believed that Sholpan was the patroness of lovers. It is on it that the souls of unborn people live. Jupiter was a symbol of nightfall. In one of the legends, a caravan of donkeys laden with goods stopped for the night, but the driver saw a bright star in the sky and took it for Tan Sholpan. Then he drove the caravan further. But instead of the long-awaited dawn, the night came. The insidious Jupiter disappeared from the sky. Then the driver understood that he had brought the whole caravan to certain death. They lost their way and all the donkeys of the caravan died. The rumor about this spread across all owls and Jupiter was given the name of Yesekirgan, the death of donkeys. Many centuries later, at the birthplace of this legend, scientists will study Jupiter on the world's only telescope, thanks to which many discoveries will be made. This is the meniscus telescope of the Maksutov system, one of the four instruments working here. It was established here in 1950. Lubov Usoltseva devoted more than one decade to observations of artificial Earth satellites. She once worked on this now rarity device. 
самый первый. The very first specimen of this type of telescope made it specially for our observatory. Therefore, you can assume that you have visited the Museum of Astronomy at the same time. There is no more like this one in the whole world. A unique tool that was used while observing small planets, artificial satellites of the Earth, by the way. Several comets were discovered. The most famous was the comet Churumovo-Gerasimenko, which must be known for everybody. Comet 67P was discovered by accident by two young astronomers from Kiev, Klim Churumov and Svetlana Gerasimenko. They came to Almaty to observe the already known comets by that time. September 11, 1969, processing photographs, Gerasimenko noticed a number of defects on them and decided that the waste can be discarded. But for some reason Svetlana did not do this and took them back to her homeland. Imagine her surprise when more experienced astronomers studied the pictures and said that this is a new object. It was given the name Comet 67P, Comet Churumov-Gerasimenko. I have a special glass plate in my hands. Earlier on this telescope they contained pictures of celestial bodies. This is a photograph of 1986 and it shows Halley's Comet. Few people know, but the Maksutov's high-speed meniscus telescope ASI-2 was designed specifically for the Almaty Observatory. At that time, all large telescopes were created with the participation of the most famous optician of the Soviet Union, Dmitry Maksutov. This telescope allowed not only to monitor objects, but also to photograph them. The first artificial satellites of the Earth launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome were observed with its help. Those days it took up to eight hours from the moment of shooting until the final result was obtained. Now this process takes just five to ten seconds. That is, the information is all included in the computer. In view of the fact that the city almost right up here near the observatory on the Kamen Plateau, scientific observations on this telescope have been stopped since 1997. Light pollution interferes. Nevertheless, it functions. Here students come on excursions and students who observe the Moon, Jupiter, Saturn and other space objects. But even in 50 years, the observatory on the Kamenskaya Plateau was considered the most equipped in the USSR. Here many young astronomers were eager to work. Getting a distribution or an invitation to the Almaty Observatory was akin to winning the lottery. The young astronomer Viktor Teufel was lucky. He came to Almaty in 1954 to practice at the famous Tikov Union. Later he stayed here and entered postgraduate school. From the 55th to the 60th until the death of academician Tikov, Teufel worked with him in the astrobotanical sector. Studies that were conducted here in the astrobotanical sector led by Tikov were primarily aimed at showing that living organisms, while primarily plant organisms, are able to adapt to very harsh conditions. Tikov put forward the idea that plants can adapt to such extreme climatic conditions due to increased or vice versa weakened absorption of solar radiation. But since the flux of solar rays on Mars is much weaker than on the Earth, the plants should reflect as little as possible the infrared there and absorb it as much as possible. Just then there were arguments about whether there is a band of chlorophyll absorption in the Martian dark areas, which is characteristic of terrestrial plants. These studies were carried out with disbelief. They were first mistaken for the scientist's dream. Tikov published a book called Astrobotany in 1959, and even after that very few people supported him in these endeavors. Only the closest like-minded people who believed that life on other planets is still possible were near him. Как сказать, к этому относились э, с недоверием вообще.
Since then, well, for a while, this idea was treated with distrust. Moreover, other Tikov's ideas were also treated like that. However, consequently, in America and other countries, the astrobiological trend has begun to develop, which has already acquired a certain niche in the field of science. Because the studies that are being conducted now show that it is possible that life exists, if not in our solar system, then on planets that are found near other stars. There are similar to the Earth among these planets. Already in our day, the Phoenix spacecraft has confirmed the existence of water on Mars, as Gabriel Tikov once wrote. Later, with the help of two other vehicles flying around Mars, data that indirectly confirmed the presence of subsoil and ice on the Red Planet were obtained. New astrobiological research is particularly intensive in the United States, and the methodology of American scientists from NASA is largely similar to the technique that was developed by Tikov more than half a century ago. Although I'm more than sure that the biological life forms exist on the satellites of other planets, especially Jupiter and Saturn. That is, there, Io and Ganymede, Callisto, Europe, there on one of these Galilean satellites, for example, there are volcanoes. In the vents of our terrestrial volcanoes, at a temperature of 300 degrees, there are bug cockroaches, living creatures that feed on sulfur, well, not on oxygen, nor anything. And where there is water, and these satellites are stone, and the stone is dissolved in water, and in general there can be biological forms of life. Every profession has its own superstitions, so, and the workers of this observatory have a similar thing. I now go along the path which is laid along the meridian. They say that if you walk on it, for the first time you need to stop and make a wish that will come true. I hope it will come true. Evacuated to Almata because of the war, the observatory from Pulkovo became the ancestor of astronomy in Kazakhstan. The most experienced scientists were equipped here, including Tikov. He was traveling to Kazakhstan already with a scientific breakthrough. He managed to do something that no one in the world has even tried. Gavriil Andrianovich Tikov, in general working in the Pulkovo, was engaged in quite broad astrophysical problems from observing stars, and even he discovered one optical effect in stellar radiation. Well, and besides, he was engaged in researches of planets. And for the first time, incidentally, he received, he made color photographs of Jupiter, Mars and Saturn. It was then when the color photography did not exist. Well, it was at the beginning of the last century. It is interesting that before the evacuation of Russian scientists to Almaty, space exploration has already been conducted here. To some extent, Tikov's predecessor was Vladimir Nikolaevich Bukman. He gave lessons at the Pedagogical Institute and he had his own observatory. Well, actually, the turret where he carried the telescope. And even in the 50s, he demonstrated the sky to students. Well, in fact, it was Bukman who sheltered the astronomers who came to Almaty in the expedition and, in essence, into evacuation. And there was a trench, a large greenhouse dug in the ground. It was the shelter of visiting astronomers, which was provided by Vladimir Nikolaevich Bukman. A simple country teacher invented a variety of solar devices, for example, a solar boiler, solar reflectors, and a helium method. During the life of Bookman, this method was not recognized. Only after the death of the inventor in a plane crash in 1962, his method began to study in more detail. Be that as it may, it was in this small personal observatory of Vladimir Bukman that Vasily Tikov glanced at the sky over Kazakhstan for the first time.
To study some of the cosmic phenomena, it is necessary to conduct around-the-clock observations for many months. This is done from different points of the planet. Kazakhstan observatories play an important role as ground observation points on the space between Japan and Europe. Data is collected in a single database. Thanks to this method of free access to information, the processes of the creation of a neutron star were discovered. The most round natural object in the universe, the Kepler star 1111.451.23 was discovered. A new exoplanet and hidden glaciers on Mars were discovered, which Tikov once spoke of. And where there is water, life is possible. Although I'm more than sure that the biological life forms exist on the satellites of other planets, especially Jupiter and Saturn. That is, there Io and Ganymede, Callisto and Europe. There on one of these Galilean satellites, for example, there are volcanoes. In the vents of our terrestrial volcanoes, at a temperature of 300 degrees, there are bug cockroaches, living creatures that feed on sulfur, well, not on oxygen, nor anything. And where there is water, and these satellites are stone, and the stone is dissolved in water, and in general there can be biological forms of life. There is a steady joking expression concerning other extraterrestrial civilizations among astronomers. Aliens are very clever and cunning, and they avoid being seen by professionals. But this is only normal scientific skepticism. For sure, there are many forms of life on other planets around other stars. And some form of life reaches such a level that there can be intelligent creatures and civilizations can appear. A sign of civilization in general, these are two signs. The first sign, when some individuals unite and make food supplies, well, like a barn, or there I do not know what. This is the first. The second sign, the most important, writing, any kind of writing, whatever. However, until today, scientists have not recorded any weighty evidence of the existence of extraterrestrial civilizations. Nevertheless, such assumptions are not completely rejected. Modern science is not yet developed enough to give answers to questions about the existence of intelligent life on other planets in the universe. For certain, in due time, people try to find the answer to this question on one more observatory, which was constructed in one of the picturesque places near Almaty. Tianshan Observatory was founded in 1956. Since 1996, it belongs to the Astrophysical Institute named after Fesenkov. The structure of this institution also includes observatories on the Kamenska Plateau and the Asi Tugan Plateau. The Tianshan Observatory is located just above the big Almaty Lake. In addition to the star observation post, there is a whole infrastructure here. Residential houses for scientists, a hotel for astronomers who come to us from Germany, Russia, Japan, USA and Korea. Nearby is a polygon to study the upper layers of the atmosphere as well as radio telescopes capable of recording solar activity. But such a modern scientific complex did not emerge immediately. The initiator of the creation of this station more than half a century ago was the graduate of the Moscow State Astronomical Institute named after Sternberg, Yelena Makarova. Yelena Alexandrovna. <laughs> Yelena Alexandrovna was summoned to the accounting department of the State Astronomical Institute named after Sternberg. This is part of the Moscow Physics Department. And they gave her a bag, a whole bag of banknotes, money. Well, with this string bag, she came to Almaty. Having arrived here, Makarova bought skis and went in search of a suitable place for the development of the observatory. She went around a lot of gorges. She was in Talga, she went to Butakova Gorge, rose above Chimbalak, but she chose the gorge of Alma Rasan. Yelena Alexandrovna came to the site, March. Elena Alexandrovna on skis explores this site. Well, places are generally quite wild. 
all sorts of animals are found. And when she returned on the same ski track, then she walked through the square, she was surprised to find that along the sign, along the track, there were traces of a snow leopard. The snow leopard is the master here, and he looked after her as his personal property. But the leopard apparently was not hungry, so he did not touch our Yelena Alexandrovna. That is such a unique moment. So we bought a donkey, we bought a yurt, set up solar telescopes and we began to observe the sun. That was the beginning. Now people work in the observatory in shifts, on average three people each. They collect the data and forward it to an observatory located on the Kamenka platform. Observations last all year round. The Tianshan Observatory also had many discoveries, including the first measurements of the distance to the Moon. Our Moscow colleagues conducted an experiment in 1970, the first in the world, the laser location of the Moon. It is from our platform, from the platform of this observatory. It is known that a Soviet lunar tractor ran around the moon, and a French corner reflector was attached to it. Our colleagues, I really do not remember, they showed me this place from our site. They attached the laser to this 48-centimeter telescope they shot toward the moon. A French colleagues, in the Indian Ocean, they caught a signal that reflected this corner reflector and determined the distance to the moon to the accuracy of 40 centimeters. Later in 1998, the Apache Point observation was founded in the Otero County, New Mexico, USA. It was there that the most accurate measurement of the distance from the Earth to the Moon was made, with the accuracy of about 30 picoseconds, which corresponds to about 2 centimeters. Now the generally accepted distance is at the nearest point 357,104 kilometers, at the most remote 406,696 kilometers. The role of terrestrial telescopes will increase, since the Hubble telescope and other orbital telescopes monitor the space. That is, if they see something interesting, they transmit the data to the ground, and then ground-based telescopes are connected and exposed to this object, and they look at what happens to this object, since the observation of such orbital telescopes as Hubble is very expensive. Observatories on the Kamenska Plateau and in the Alma Rasan Gorge are not the only ones in Almaty and the region. In 1975, the construction of the third observatory on the Asi Plateau in the Turgen Gorge began. And there were good reasons for this. Astroclimate, briefly speaking, these are conditions for observations from optical telescopes, from terrestrial telescopes. Because you know, then we live near the city of Almaty, and the city of Almaty is one of the big cities. Naturally, a large highlight, which today very much interferes with the observation from our telescope. Therefore, we are trying to conduct our best observations from the AC Turgen Observatory, which is located 100 kilometers from such large cities as Almaty and others. Observations of space bodies from the R.C. Turgen Observatory began in 1981. At first, everything went well. The most advanced equipment was installed, far-reaching plans were built. At that time, funding for the purchase of a one-meter telescope was provided. At that time, it was considered one of the larger telescopes. It still works today, it works perfectly. And so, in the early 90s, we also managed to purchase a 1.5-meter telescope, which was launched last year for the first time. Imagine, after 20 years. As the Soviet Union collapsed, the economic situation was unfavorable. Only in 1991, thanks to the efforts of the Institute's employees, two towers for telescopes and a hotel complex were built. Then we installed a meter telescope. 
Without excessive modesty, the Asi Turgan Observatory can be called the only one in Kazakhstan with an ideal astroclimate. There is high transparency of the atmosphere, there is no light pollution, and there is virtually no turbulence which can distort images. The very location of these, our observatories, that here in Asa, Turgen, are observatories that fill the voids between the Ural Mountains and the Japanese Sea. Because modern data, when we receive them, we should receive this data in some kind of large company. Telescopes should be located evenly on all continents, and we must continuously observe an object, a star, I do not know, and these objects, we get a large number of observations of them. This series of observations should not have discontinuities. For people living in the territory of ancient Kazakhstan, the observation of celestial objects has always had a sacred significance. They were guided by, learned about the exact change of seasons, determined the sides of the world. In support of this, there is one legend. According to legends, at night the stars rose to heaven and in the afternoon they descended to the ground to sleep. Once a camel, a horse and a cow decided to kill them. A horse and a camel got six of the twelve stars. The rest got the cow. But the awkward animal missed them and the stars flew to the sky. Since then, the steppes have six cold months and six warm months. These lights in the sky were called Ukair, in astronomy known as the constellation of the Pleiades. They disappear from the sky in the summer months. Almost daily, because there are many objects, many comets, many asteroids. Many exoplanets, as you know, open today. Therefore, it happens quite regularly. This is not a big event today. But some events, such as the explosion of a supernova, the discovery of such large galaxies, this is certainly an extraordinary event, one can say once in five years. In recent years, the work of Almaty observatories has begun to intensify. This happened not without the help of the staff of the Astrophysical Institute. Three telescopes of the Tenshan Observatory have been installed, new equipment has been installed and the old one has been reconstructed and modernized. Now astronomers do not need to sit near telescopes at night in the heat or cold. All control goes remotely. Now, at the moment, observational astronomy of Kazakhstan, thanks to young, talented people, well, our leaders too, must be taken into account, starts to move from stagnation to a good world level. There were some strange cases in the fate of observatories. Employees of the institute rarely tell anyone about this, but yet they made an exception for the time puzzle. Once an emergency happened on Kamenskaya platform. It was the fault of the workers who were welding under the dome of the telescope. And there the internal paneling, thermal insulating, while the cardboard actually caught fire, while the fire started. But firefighters did not manage to arrive. We extinguished all this ourselves, on our own. True, it costed me a spoiled shirt, because when I was extinguishing the fire with the extinguisher, I also watered myself naturally at the same time. Well, there were such comical cases. Kazakhstan astronomers have their own dream. A powerful telescope with a diameter of 3.6 meters. Its installation will help our observatories to reach one level with the world's scientific centers. But the main thing, of course, is people who devote themselves to this study of the cosmos.
Mastering Space, Developing Technologies and Looking Further into the Depth of the Universe, a person actually asks only one question, is there life in other worlds? So far there is no answer to this, space science is moving towards new discoveries and today we learned how it all began in Kazakhstan. My name is Andrei Slozhin and you watched The Time Puzzle. See you soon.